So it's actually so that, that's why people. that's why also keto diet plays a role because the best fuel for the brain is ketones. Not ketogenic. He's saying ketones. Okay. <laughs> right. Right. I'm, yeah. I'm. I'm trying to interpret how to explain the ketone, Gabriel. Well, uh, ketone is is ketogenic is 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 a diet that's going to be higher in producing ketones, but right. ketones are what the body produces in, in the breakdown of, of certain products. When you're fasting, for example, you create ketones because it's a breakdown from fat, your own body fat, if that makes sense. Sure, so yeah. those ketones that are actually breaking down and provide fuel for the brain that's actually up to eight times more effective. So, so what do you think about people? Um, I know there are products on the market that are ketones so that you don't, ha you know, for people who don't want to put themselves in a state of ketosis by eating a keto diet, but want to have the ketones because of exactly what you're saying. What do you think of those products on the market? Is that some sort of, uh, frankly, I, I, I've never seen any data. I haven't really looked for it. So let's not say I'm an expert on this, that, that would, it doesn't make sense to me that you can put ketones into a supplement and have that go through the body and work. It just doesn't make sense to me because it's not part of the, the chain reaction that goes on. What is your thought on that? Well, my thought is I don't recommend doing it that way. I kind of really recommend you know, the importance of more plant fat in the diet mm -hmm. that's going to convert in our systems into uh, fuel for the brain. And let me say, let me say something. When, when Gabriel and I are speaking, this may sound like a foreign language to a lot of you. Because the, the like, you talk about Joel Furman. I love the guy. I think he's tremendous. He's done such great work helping people become plant-based. Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Campbell, the superhero of all of us who really validated this scientifically like none of us even thought to do, no less did. I know the list goes on. Dr. McDougal, who was a courageous medical doctor back in the 1970s, who basically stood up and said, hey, we've got to be plant-based eaters. And it goes on before that. You know, the Paul Braggs and the Jack LaLanne's and the Dr. Jensen's, and the Ann Wigmore's, you know, and the list goes on. But they were conventional thinkers as they are today. We're talking about quantum science. We're talking about quantum levels. And I couldn't have talked about this or addressed it or had any sense of authority on it for the first 30 years I did this. But after you work with, in my case, I've worked with 300,000 people here and in Europe, lecturing to halls of 2,000 people quite often, and, and you know, do three-day conferences, and writing 31 books, and having the sickest people in the world come here. After they go through the monkey show out there, they show up here, and then we have to see what happens, what works. We don't have a chance to mess around when they're you know, They're coming to us and saying to us, listen, you're the guys who maybe can bring me back like you did my aunt in 1962 or like you did the guy down the block last year. And so we try our best to use every possible methodology we possibly can find that's valid. And I don't want to sound like I'm so anal. It's only science based. Some of the stuff is so quantum. It's not science based. It just works. <laughs> it just works. And then eventually science catches up with what we do. But the quantum way of thinking is not you need a lot of calories mm -hmm. to get energy. I must take no more than 1,500 calories a day, like Gabriel, not because both of us got smart one day, we got old one day. And our body started to cry out to us and say, you idiot, don't eat so much. <laughs> That's The body knows, the body says, hey, wait a minute, look at every old person, even if they're on McDonald's, they're not gonna eat as much when they're 70 and 80 years old. You know, That 90 years old, they're just not gonna eat as much because the body knows. And there's not one study, listen closely, not one study that's ever been done on centenarians and longevity that doesn't confirm exactly what we're saying. Right. High caloric intake diets are not good. Low caloric intake diets are, and small amount. So probably when I was uh, probably 60, my body said, hey, you know, don't eat so much. 
And so maybe for 15 years now, I've been eating one meal a day most of the time. Now, weekends, I may eat two when I'm with my family or running around or do something, but you know, that's it. And it's not because we're extremists. It's because we're well-seasoned. And when he's testing himself, I'm testing myself before we put, impose it on other people. You know, obviously, I don't want to hurt somebody with some crazy idea I have. Let's go on a, a 200-day fast. Uh, right. Uh, but the reality is, then we check behind why it may have worked. So you think he sits up all night and I sit up all night, say, let's think about the science before we do it. No, we do it and then find the science to why it worked. <laughs> That's what I think it's very accurate what Brian just said. <laughs> uh, and that makes that makes sense. That makes sense. You can't wait around for the for the science to come out. So succinctly, so, wait, I want to get back to the one thing. It, we we need to understand that the brain, if we aren't taking care of our brain, mm -hmm. it shrinks about one percent per year. After fifty. Well, actually, after maybe twenty five. Oh wow, well, that's what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> so. Some research says by the time you literally are 80, if you aren't taking care of your brain, which is what we're talking about, which I will be lecturing on on Sunday, uh, you can lose up to 25% of your brain size. Wow. And I may say, you better listen to him. He's a psychiatrist by training. So he's acutely interested in the brain. I'm interested. I'm very in interested in the brain. You've met. <laughs> he's really so, interested in the brain. <laughs> so... Uh, well, as Thomas Edison said, the body's for carrying the brain around. Yes, exactly right. Okay. Well, Thomas Edison said a lot of great things. Yes, he did. <laughs> so the point I'm making is we really need to understand the brain is shrinking unless we do things that help it grow. Yeah. And when the brain shrinks, it doesn't work so well. And the brain shrinks, people start to move into MCI, mild cognitive decline. And that's what Joe Furman's, you know, part of what he's seeing. Besides, people who he sees are usually doing a high carbohydrate diet. I think that's fair to say. And that just proves the point that the high carbohydrate diet does activate MCI. Do you see where we're going? So it, okay. mild cognitive but explain MCI. Explain MCI. Uh, that mild cognitive, mild cognitive, cognitive decline is right. what people begin to. Exactly. Experience. Now, what I want to say is that's beginning to happen to people in their 40s. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because part of the brain degeneration is junk food, pesticides, herbicides, 5G. There's just a tremendous amount of things impinging on our brain function. That's, you know, Netflix are one of them. Netflix, you know, vaccines. <laughs> So the wine that people are drinking things. while they're watching Netflix is exactly helpful. the series, especially. <laughs> so, so the point I'm making is that we're doing multiple things to shrink our brain. My, I'm going to be talking about it on Sunday, but I will tell you what what are the th three things that really make a difference. Fasting actually increases the size of your brain. That's really important to understand. I won't go into all the dynamics of it, but it stimulates brain neuro. I would love to hear you speak on the benefits, though, of fasting, because that is part of what this panel is supposed to be about. So I'd love to hear the benefits. You don't need to go into all the mechanisms, but I'd love to actually hear what I can expect, because okay. that's something I'm very interested in. I know a lot of the audiences, too. Okay, but just to finish that concept, sure. um, exercise increases brain size, and then eating a healthy diet, you know, that, that contains a certain amount of nutrients to do it. Now, the B12 is extremely important, as uh, you know, Brian mentioned. I get my B12 from a, a bacteria-grown B12, which is the only thing we, we think is really producing human active B12. I'm going to use that word. The B12 that you measure in your blood is not necessarily human act of B12. And I think that's what Brian was referring to. It's, it's B12, but it's not human active. There is a test for that, the MMA. It's not mixed martial arts, okay? The MMA <laughs> okay, is a urine test that measures methyl malonic acid, which tells you if you have the, you know, enough human active B12 in your system. 
And, and that's so you can measure it. You can check yourself out with it. It's not a big deal. It's, it's a urine test and you easy to so do.